So remember, guys, that group meeting is every Tuesday night at 630 Central. All right, here comes to Jaden. Oh, look who else is on here. Your competition, man. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Just <laughs> yeah, the competition. That's right. <laughs> it's so funny, Jeff. Macros. Not waiting for you. <laughs> okay. We we got this guy. Uh, what's his name? Your client's going to compete. The new one that's going to compete. That's thinking about competing. Don't don't, don't put him on the spot. He's thinking. He's yeah. thinking. Charlie. Yeah. He's bringing it. He, he's sending Wade posing pictures and everything. And uh, I think it's great. He's like, I'm coming for you, coach. I'm like, dang, he's serious. <laughs> and then um, old Clady, Ron. Ron, yeah. Ron, he could compete if he wanted to. He looks amazing. <laughs> Day. Yeah, I could. He looks great. I, mean, I hate for him to get heartbroken, but oh, <laughs> well, how would it feel? How would it feel going up against your own client? Oh, I'd love it. I'd love it, and I'm gonna coach him just as you know what. If it comes down to it, and and I were to have a client uh, in the same show as me, uh, I would have them duplicate exactly what I what I do. Yeah, I would because. You know. Except for their numbers and things would be a little different. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah, but as like far as the protocol. Yeah. 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 They gave me like two extra nuggets, too. Yeah. Somebody that, got two extra nuggets. Two extra nuggets. Two extra nuggets. <laughs> oh, sorry. That is not, not good. <laughs> uh, he muted his mic real quick. That's hilarious. <laughs> I want two extra nuggets. Yeah, I want two extra nuggets, too. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Hold they're on, not yeah. for me. They're for my son. I'm not oh, eating, yeah. uh -huh. <laughs> eating Chick-fil-A right, nuggets. Yeah. I promise. I promise. <laughs> Asking for a friend, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, me. My son. Oh, my gosh. Well, listen, guys, we're going to go ahead and get started. We might have more people come on here. Um, from now on, we are going to actually use a code to get in, okay? So I don't have to keep letting people in. So our code is going to be 1717. I'll make sure that I put it everywhere. And um, we're doing these only on Tuesdays now, 630 Central PM. We might have special things that come up on other days of the week because of the, um, the challenge is coming September 1. And so Wade and I are gearing up for that, we're working with Transformation Protein, who is our sponsor. And they are excited. They're uh the CEO is going to be showing up. He's going to be part of a group. Actually, both of the founders are going to be part of our group, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So you'll see a lot of other people in here. You've probably seen Wade and I on some transformation protein commercials on Facebook, everywhere. They're everywhere. And Instagram, all of the above. They're even on, <coughs> not Snapchat, but what's the other one? Uh, TikTok. 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 Yeah. I don't so. have any that, anything. I don't. I don't know what TikTok is. Never been on it, but evidently that's the that's the growing thing. Uh, Our kids don't want us on there. That's fine. I, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not going to get on there. It's the anymore. only place that we aren't, and they're happy about that. Actually, I have a fake account over there, but I just uh, did I it to follow it, our daughter. Uh, and I don't know how to. I don't I know how to. Good. I don't know how to use any of it. So. Anyway. They're, I think they're very short. I'm sure most of y'all know what TikTok is. Uh, I think they're very short videos. Yeah, they're live, I think. Anyways, we didn't come to talk about TikTok. We came yeah. to talk about diet tips and tricks, guys. And not only do we have them, but you guys have already probably came up with some stuff that we would love to hear you share because we're here to help each other as a group, all right? And so I wanted to talk about that Um one of the things that I do when I'm planning meals that I didn't know when I first started this was to plan my protein first. Okay. So I'm planning protein first for every meal. And now since I'm focusing on fiber, I'm planning fiber second. So if I'm eating breakfast, I'm thinking, what is my protein going to be? What is my fiber going to be? And I'm going to tell you what, I used to kind of throw it in there and eat whatever I wanted to. And I would end up at the end of the day going, oh my gosh, it's like two hours till bed. And I have 45 grams of protein to eat. I mean, it was just like, holy cow, I can't do that. You know, or I'd have like four or five or six truthfully fibers. 
that's all all day and i'm gone holy cow now what am i going to eat nothing I, I mean go cut down a tree because i don't think anything would have more fiber than that and just start gnawing i couldn't figure out i'm like i have to start early in the day so you have to start early and at every meal and snack you have to think protein fiber then fill the rest in protein fiber fill the rest in all right that is a huge tip and that will help you bring have great success i'm telling you remember every meal all right number two for my list is this weigh everything you'll get comfy and you'll think i know what four ounces of chicken looks like i know what a cup of this or that or this looks like i know what an ounce of uh pistachios looks like and i'm going to tell you what if you screw up on pistachios or avocado your calories go out the roof peanut butter i thought i know i'm not eating two tablespoons of peanut butter there is no way i'm smearing the bread real thin you know i'm like no i was eating more than two tablespoons of peanut butter and i had at least 50 to 100 maybe calories extra in my peanut butter make sure you weigh it i know it's a pain in your butt but i'm telling you things like that not doing them will hinder your success and slow you down all right another thing is remember to to measure your coffee creamer you know if we're going up against our calories and we're having four cups of coffee like some of us do sometimes and we're just taking the creamer and just throwing it in there man we can have 400 calories in coffee creamer really quick i'm not kidding you so be careful dressing salad dressing man be careful with it guys because it will add up so quick wade said we want to let you know how this goes i'm going to tell him wade because i like to embarrass him wade's like man let's go get a zaxby salad it's going to be great we'll get grilled chicken breast and we'll just get the salad we won't eat the toast or anything i'm like okay this was about two years ago yeah and he was on he was on the phone with a client and so he's just like he grabs one of the, they give him, they gave him two dressings. All right. He grabs one of the dressings. He puts it on. It's a big salad and he put it on there. And I'm sitting over there going, I know better. Like, right. But I can't interrupt him because he's on the phone with the client. He takes another pack. Right? <laughs> all over there. How many calories did your salad end up having? 700 and the, the dressing was over 400 calories. The dressing alone was over 400 calories. I was like, baby, that was like, you just ate over two full candy bars, two and a half it candy was, bars in dressing. Thousand, it was a thousand calorie salad. Yes. And he was like, oh my gosh, why is salad dressing so high calories? I'm like, I know, right? He learned his lesson. We've never forgot it. Pretty, sure, laughed. pretty sure it was thousand dollars. He goes, man, that salad was good though. I was like, yeah, it was like two and a half candy bars. <laughs> of dressing but make sure that you're measuring that i, I don't put, think i was on a cut at that time <laughs> you were was I? yes that's why you're so upset about it yes. yeah but that's yeah that wasn't it. good so um that is another tip um you know fiber or protein guys i'm just rattling some stuff off real quick because i want you to be able to speak but for protein man i have ate so much chicken and I talked to Chris earlier. She said, I'm not that I really like chicken because <laughs> you just get to where you're like, if I see another chicken breast, I'm, I'm, I'm going to vomit. Like I've been there and I'm like, how many ways can I make chicken breasts? You know, and after a moment, it's like, oh my gosh, right now I'm fine with putting it on salad. Actually, Wade and I are getting some salads from Kroger and they are pretty good, aren't they? They have different kind of lettuce and uh, cabbage and different things in them and we're putting our meat on top of it our cold chicken and we put dry seasoning on our cold chicken and um, when he cooked it it's well it's cold now but anyway so it's seasoned like that and we just use a little bit of dressing we measured out I mean it's delicious so for us that has been a new way to do chicken here recently that we like we used to put it on just some lettuce and stuff it was still kind of boring, but they have unique flavors that, that we don't think of in salad that are really, really nice. We really like. Yes, the pre-packed salad. Yeah, the pre-packed salad. So they're really, really good. Um, as far as that and protein, I was going to say, you know, many of us get tired of chicken and we get tired of 
turkey breast and all of the lean meats and white fish. I am so tired of white fish. I don't know if I can eat it again uh, for probably a couple of years. That's how bad I feel about it. But um, there's other people out there who love white fish. I think Pam, you like white fish, right? Can't hear you. We can't hear you, man. Let me, how about if I unmute? <laughs> I don't eat a ton of fish, so it's not, I, I'll eat like fish tacos, but that's about it. Oh yeah, fish tacos are so good and you can make them so healthy. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you can, there's some recipes out there. Um, I never did like fish tacos. Uh, I didn't think I did because they sounded gross to me. Yeah. Oh, I had them one time at Applebee's and I'm sure they weren't the lean kind, right? But they were delicious. And I found some great recipes where you can make fish tacos. Oh my gosh, they're so good. And they are so just low calorie and healthy. Mm -hmm. And so um, I enjoy that every now and then. My mouth is watering thinking about it. Well, like um, tonight, I, tonight I did chicken enchiladas. It's just chicken, a really little bit of cheese and corn tortillas, a um, little bit of the enchilada sauce and some brown rice. I mean, it was good, but oh, it, yeah. It's healthy, it's low calorie, but it's, it's something different, so. Yeah, so there's, um, you know, on the protein guys, you know, we got a vegan list. Think about maybe adding some of that stuff. There's things that Wade and I have found like powdered peanut butter, it's delicious. And we use it in a lot of different things. And sometimes I even just put a little bit of water on it and I'll spread it on some stuff. Some of my Ezekiel bread, hot Ezekiel bread. Um, something like that I really like um, and that has some protein in it so it's really good when peanut butter is we love peanut butter but the calories are so high when we're on a cut that's what we do um, and it helps a little bit with the protein too so um, as far as protein you know look at your Greek yogurts I know I always talk about Greek yogurt but there's other things out there that are vegetarian proteins actually that are pretty good um, that you know, you wouldn't believe how much protein uh, that peas have in them, which shocked me. I was like, peas have protein? Um, broccoli has some protein, a little bit. Um, and so foods like that are also have protein in there if you like peas, things like that. Um, there's also things that I do that people say, well, that doesn't sound very healthy, but I do them on occasion because I get burnout on things. One of those things is like, I will have, I'll take Ezekiel bread, I'll put boar's head meat on it. So it's like a lunch meat, but it's a healthy lunch meat. I'll put mustard on there. Sometimes I'll slice tomato and put it on there. It's really good. So I'll have a sandwich real quick and I'll do a side of Quest protein chips. And for me, I feel like I am on the biggest cheat ever. Like I'm having chips and a sandwich and I'm still meeting my goals. And I'm like, this is great. So if you pack your lunch, that's something to consider if you're packing for you know, to go on a trip or you're packing for work. That's a, a great thing to consider doing that. Or one of these cold salads, like I was talking about, you can just throw cold chicken on there and put your dressing on the side measured. And it is great. Just take it out of the fridge and eat it. You don't even have to heat it up at work. All right. Um, so on protein, while we're there, do you guys have any protein tips that you want to share? How do you get your protein in? I guess I'll speak up. <laughs> I just do the basics, um, eggs, cottage cheese, Greek yogurt, chicken, lean ground beef. We had lean ground beef burgers last night. So just try to, you know, if it's a real fatty steak, I don't do that very often. But um, if it works in the macros, it works, you know, so. Um, that's pretty much my go-to uh, staple shrimp. I do a lot of shrimp because it's really high in protein, really low in fat. So if I'm, if I'm short on protein, but I don't have a lot of room in the others, shrimp is great. Grill some up or, I mean, it cooks up really quick. So um, it's super easy. So just, yeah. I, I'm, I pretty much eat a lot of the same stuff. So it's just easier for me. I want to add two, um, two ways to get protein if you really, and, and this is not gonna, some of you aren't gonna go this route, okay? Some of you will though, but venison, okay? Deer meat, 
I don't know if any of you have ever had venison, any of you have husbands that hunt or anything like that. Um, it's very low in fat, it's very lean. And it's uh, for four ounces, it's 33.8 grams of protein, which is about 10 grams more than four ounces of chicken, okay? So venison is an option. Also, wild turkey, all right? Any of you know any turkey hunters? The, <laughs> the breast meat is about equivalent. I think it's 29.8 grams of protein per four ounces. So venison and wild turkey is also really, really good uh, as far as lean meat, high protein, okay? It's a little higher. Venison is uh, 170 calories for four ounces, whereas chicken is about 120 for four ounces. So you, you watch the, you watch your calories, but if you've got room for it, um, it's definitely lean and very high in protein. So, yeah. so you know that I'm mostly pescatarian. I only eat fish. So scallops, they are excellent. They're really, really high in protein. Yeah. Cost has them and I put them in my air fryer and just spray a little bit of olive oil on them and they brown up and kind of caramelize they're like candy wow whoa really good that sounds good <clears throat> and then edamame is another good like snack and I put red pepper flakes on it I like edamame it's really good mm -hmm. yeah Quinoa also, it, it is, it's very high in carbs, mm -hmm. uh, but it also does have protein in it also, so. Yeah, yeah, that's another staple for me. It's mm -hmm. a good one. So, you know, protein is hard to get in, it really is a lot of times, um, but you got to focus on it at every meal, you really do. And I hope that even when you're not on our program, you'll continue that. Because as we age, we lose muscle guys. It's just normal. It happens. And protein helps you hold on to that muscle. So we've always got to do some form of resistance training for the rest of our life. You don't have to go in the gym and lift 300 pounds like Chris and Jeff and Pam and uh, all those people, but you definitely need some resistance training, even if it's body weight resistance training. Uh, guys, it's, it's just so important to keep it in your life that we're strong. And when we, as we age that, we don't get to a place where you know, we're 65, 70, 80 years old, and we look at our bodies and have to have assisted living, you know, and that's what we want to keep from. Um, you know, right now, we're a lot of us focus on what we look like in our bodies, but it just can't be that it has to be about health, too. And I think most of us are at the age where we're like, we're going, okay, I, I've got to take care of my physical health. You know, back in our 20s, it was like, I didn't care. You know, I was I just worried about how good I how good I did or did not look. And uh, now I'm like, I want to look better, but I also need to be healthy. And so, you know, we've got to take these things in into account. You you need to eat protein. I, I remember I, a little old lady at Walgreens she checks this out. And I remember thinking she doesn't look very well and she's just real thin. And she was losing her hair and everything. And she said, um, it was funny because I'm checking out getting the Hershey bar with almonds, guys. And I started laughing and, and she goes, I didn't think you guys would buy this. And I said, hey, it's a little cheap for me. I'm so excited to have it. I said, I'm only buying it because it has almonds and almonds have protein. So really it's just, I'm buying it because it's protein. She started laughing. She goes, I have to eat more protein. I said, well, I was just kidding about this being protein. It's not hardly got any protein in it. She said, the reason I I'm losing my strength and I am so thin is because I don't eat very much and I'm losing my hair. And she said, I went to the doctor and he said, you're not getting enough protein. And she said, I have to change that or I'm going to be having to live with somebody or have assisted living. And I was like, holy crap. You know, there she was standing before me. And we've got women on this program that forget to eat, you know, and they'll look back and uh, I get 400 calories, 500 calories from them every now and then, or, Hey, I've got like 12 grams of protein today. And what is going to happen is that you're not superhuman. You know, we all lose muscle. You're not superhuman. If you do not take care of that, 
you're going to be in a place where you don't want to be. Eat the protein. Even if you're vegetarian, find a way to get your protein in. It's so important. I have vegetarians on our program. We have a pescatarian, which is Rhonda, who means that she basically eats fish and that's it as protein. And of course, she eats veg vegetable proteins and things like that. But they make it work. Our vegetarians, it's harder for them. They have to figure it out, you know, and uh, as a pescatarian, it's a little easier for you than a, than a vegetarian, but I'm going to tell you what, they do it and you can do it too. So make it work. You know, everyone says, well, that uh, I've heard people say in the past that I don't want to eat too much protein because it can give me um, kidney disease. That is untrue. Protein does not cause kidney disease. People with kidney disease have to eat lower protein, but protein does not cause kidney disease. That is a fact by scientists. It does not cause kidney disease, okay? So listen to me. You know, women tell me, oh, I don't wanna to eat too much protein. Listen, you probably aren't getting half of what you need. All right, so eat protein. It's important to your health. In uh, Second World War II, I wanna harp on this for a minute because I want you guys to realize how important this is. In World War II times, men's average weight was only 143 pounds. Can you imagine that? That wasn't that long ago. Average weight for a man was 143 pounds, Second World War, okay? Whenever they were in, they'd have to go into the hospital or some kind of care where they were injured. Because everything was so bad back then, there were rations on everything. And so many of the military men that were injured, even with small injuries, were dying. And the government had to step in because they said, this is not acceptable. We have to do something. And doctors told them, we need to make sure they're getting plenty of protein. Do you know that they put those military men that were injured on 250 grams of protein daily? They were 143 pounds the mortality rate, which was mortality rate, means they die, okay, went down by 50%. 50% 50 more of them survived than they had in the past by bringing up protein. And can you imagine how much protein that is? 250 grams for a 143 pound man, that is a lot. I have never ate that much protein in my life. But protein helps your body heal and recover. Whenever I had to have my surgeries on my chest last year, my doctor said, I want you to make sure you're getting plenty of water and plenty of protein. Protein is going to help your body repair itself. And he said, I find that people who eat low protein have a long recovery to heal. So make sure that you are getting that protein in, guys. It's so important, ladies and gentlemen, especially ladies. All right. So find a way to get it in. There's all kinds of ways. There's protein powders. There's protein bars. There's meat protein. There's things like satan and tempeh that are a vegetarian protein. Um, there are egg whites and Greek yogurts and all kinds of ways to get it in. And we just need to do it at every meal. All right. I've harbored on that long enough. Anybody else have any protein tips? Okay, let's talk about fiber. So we're gonna focus on fiber secondly, because if we don't focus on fiber meal one, after protein and every snack, we're not gonna get it in, all right? So fiber is a big deal, guys, because it helps level your blood sugar through the day. So in America right now, there is, according to doctors, if we continue on the path we're on as Americans and don't change our diet, by the year 2050, over 50% of Americans will have type two diabetes. Why is this? Well, one, we're getting a lot of white sugar in our diet. Number two, we're getting a lot of white flour, which means that we have taken fiber out of everything because we want light and fluffy and soft. And so when we take the fiber out of our foods, what happens is our blood sugar, when we eat, it spikes and then it drops out. And when it drops out, we get those hunger pains and we have these cravings of, you guys, I've been there if you haven't. Uh, I know you have, we get cravings. We want something else, something sugary. We feel tired, um, but our blood sugar will spike from that 
really quickly and drop. Our body doesn't know how to deal with all of the spiking and the dropping. And so that is what helps cause type, type two diabetes. We've got to get fiber in our diets. For men, it should be 30 grams at minimum across the board every single day. And I thought, you know, while we eat veggies, so salad, I'm thinking I get plenty of fiber, right? I have found that me eating salad, even at every meal, I'm not getting enough fiber. So as a woman on a low calorie diet, minimum should be 21. That is low. That is still considered low fiber. So you've got to focus on that fiber, not only because it helps us feel more full through the day while we're on a diet, but it helps us lose body fat by keeping that blood sugar stable and not storing fat. Okay, so make sure that you work it in and get it in. Even when you're off our program, focus on fiber. It's so important to your health. The same doctors that are doing these studies said that fiber is a predictor of your health. If you have low fiber and you don't have bad health right now, you will in the future. If you're eating a higher fiber diet and your health is good right now, most likely you will consider with good, you will, uh, in your future, you have good health. Fiber is that big a deal. They said that the more that they study fiber, the more that they are learning how important it is to our diets. And we're as man, we're manufacturing everything and we're taking fiber out of everything and it's not good. All right. So make sure you're getting it in. Does anybody have any fiber tips that they want to share? I love the Olay high fiber wraps. They're so good and they're really soft. And so sometimes I'll make like um, an egg or egg white wrap in the morning. Yesterday I had it with my tuna in it. It's really good with fish tacos, but they're really good. Yeah, really good. I love them too. And they have bigger ones and smaller ones now. We found <clears throat> ones that are 30 calories the other day. And I think they had seven grams for 30 calories of fiber, seven grams. And um, Wade and I like them with egg whites and um, ground, turkey. ground turkey mixed together. And it's like we put it, we just, just take it just like that, mix it together, put some salt and pepper on it, put it in one of those uh, extreme wellness wraps. I like avocado on mine and I'll put some salsa on there. I'm telling you what, it is delicious for breakfast that way. So I'm where, getting are you getting the, where are you getting the fiber from? Uh, uh, from the avocado has a lot of fiber in it, but it is a higher calorie food. So you need to make sure that you weigh it. Okay. High but fat, also right. from the extreme wellness wraps, they're just like, um, they're like tortilla shells. Yeah. The soft ones, just like burritos. Okay. Yeah. They're called extreme wellness wraps. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. They're you, can -E. you can get them at Walmart, Kroger. Okay. Yeah. They guys okay. throw, some, throw some spinach in those eggs and they'll eat more fiber for you. What'd you say? Throw some spinach in the eggs and you get some more fiber in there. Yeah. Spinach would be great on that kind of a wrap. Spinach, spinach and everything. Tomatoes on there. <laughs> put some avocado on there. Heck, throw a little bit of cheese on there if you want to. Oh, that, you're talking about a good breakfast. That's delicious. <laughs> That's delicious. I'm going to make me one right now. <laughs> so great job on that one. Anybody else have some fiber tips? You guys have all heard my berry story, man. Blackberries and raspberries have the most I have fiber. <clears throat> you have Blackberries? No, I'm new. This is my first time on. So. Okay. Blackberries, raspberries. Get them in the freezer section. They're cheaper and they're consistently not mushy they're 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 great uh strawberries from about, the freezer section for some reason strawberries are sour in the freezer section and how about so, blueberries? blueberries blueberries are they have fiber but they're not quite as high as raspberries and blackberries because they don't have all the seeds in them right but they okay. do have some fiber yes yeah, strawberries as well but if i get those i get them from produce um of course they're still not as high as blackberries and raspberries things like you wouldn't believe that avocado, because it's so creamy, has a lot of fiber. It does. Um, things like Brussels sprouts have a lot of fiber in them. So we have a fiber guide inside the Bod Garage. Check it out. The ones you okay. want to focus on are the lower calorie ones right now, because if you're in a calorie cut, if you go eat you a, a cup or two of beans, 
it's going to mess up your whole day. While beans are so healthy for you and have a lot of fiber and a little bit of protein too, they will mess up your whole diet. And so make sure that if you're eating beans, which I love black beans, Wade and I'll put a couple tablespoons on a, one of those burritos with our, you know, we like it on there. Um, so do that. Any, anybody else? Okay, guys, and fiber supplements are not as good as fiber food. Remember that. Fiber supplements are made to help with your bowels. That's basically what they do. They can, um, they help with that issue. They can prevent colon cancer because of that. But fiber in your foods actually goes into your body and helps it keep things like cholesterol where it needs to be or knock it down. So if you have high cholesterol, you need to focus on fiber, all right? You need to get your fiber in. Um, you also need to get your omega-3s in, which that is things like salmon, uh, things like omega-3s. Uh, Jace, I can't think of any of them right now. Salmon's a big one. Salmon's a big one. But you can also take a fish oil supplement for that, for your omega-3s. Um, so that those are some tips there. Um, guys, workout tips. I want to do this one really quick before we, before we go. I know water, we always talk about water and, uh, you know, just simply start in the morning. Same thing with protein and fiber. Start in the morning with your water. I forget, wait till half a day is gone. And I'm like, holy crap, how do I get a gallon of water in? You have to start at breakfast. So first thing you do is get up, get you some water, you know, what you could do. And I used to do all the time and I need to get back to, I would put some lemon in some water. I would take a teaspoon of um, Bragg's vinegar and put that in there, swish it around and drink it. It's kind of like a morning detox. I loved it. At first it was kind of, kind of gross, but, uh, yeah, I really liked it. So I'm going to go back to that. Um, you just kind of get used to things, I guess. So that's what I did for that. But water, yeah, start it in the day. Get you one of those jugs with the time on it. If you look at the time and it says you should be here by 3 p.m. and it's 5 p.m. and you're at 11 a.m. on your water jug, you're screwed. So, <laughs> so I love that. I always have to try to catch up. You know, I'm like, oh, gosh, I got to catch up. So having one of those water jugs you can order on Amazon with the times and the sayings on them are very helpful. It's only like what, 12, 15 bucks, and it will be helpful. You can carry that jug everywhere. All right, workout tips. Let's cover these guys. My workout tip is this, and you guys will have some. Some of you guys have worked out for a long time, and my workout tip is this. Schedule it every time. Don't wait until you can fit it in. Don't say, well, I'm going to work out today and not have it on your calendar. Because if I don't put it on my calendar at a certain time of day and know at this time I'm going to the gym, I'm going to tell you, I get so busy, it does not happen. I keep thinking I'm going to do it later. It does not happen. So put it on your calendar, schedule it in to your before your work day, during your work day, after your work day, put it on there. Uh, my second tip is this. If it doesn't challenge you, it's not changing you. If you're doing the same workout you've always done, you're gonna get the same result you've always got. If you're going into the gym and you wanna see change, doing the same thing over and over and over again, you aren't gonna see change. You don't have to change up your exercise. What you have to do is change up your, your way you do it, your intensity of it. You have to change up either with heavier weights or lighter weights and more reps. You know, on Instagram, it's like, do this exercise, do this exercise, do this exercise. And I'm gonna be really honest, the workouts that really work are the ones you do over and over and over again for years, but you, you change the intensity of them. Wade has done the same workouts for how many years? Mm. Years. He doesn't have new fancy workouts that he does. He does the same ones. The best bodies we know are the best competitors in the world that look amazing. The strongest people you would ever see, women and men, do the same boring workout all the time. They change up the intensity of it. Sometimes they go lighter weight. Sometimes they go heavier weight. Those are my tips for workouts. I'd love to hear you guys. 
You guys. You guys. You guys. You guys. I'd love you guys. to hear you guys. Yeah. Here's another tip. This is this is actually the best one that that I've come across. Uh, you get into these routines. Say it's arm day. You go to the gym and you've got five different movements that you're going to do, five different exercises, okay? So you do this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. The next time you go in, you do this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. The next time, the same. The next time, the same. The next time, the same. Your muscles will develop a memory. Listen to me. By the time you get to the third or fourth one, after several months, your muscles are not working as hard as they were in the beginning. So this is what you do. You go this way, and then you go this way, and then you go this way. And then the fourth time, you go this way. You start with the last exercise you normally do, and you end with the first exercise. So say it's chest day, and your first exercise is flat bench, okay? Then you go to flies, then you go to dumbbells, then you go to the fly machine, and then you do incline, whatever it is that you're going to do. Then you do cable crosses, whatever it is, six. And you've been doing it time after time after time. Start with the cable cross. And your last exercise is that damn flat bench that you've been doing so easy. Try to do it now. You're wiped out by the time you get here, but you still have to do it. So your muscles are pushing and they're pushing and they're pushing so much harder than what they were going this way time after time after time. You want to confuse the muscle group. You have to because it will get the best of you. It's smarter than you think. It will develop a memory. Okay. Well, yeah. And it's, it's the fact that because they're saying now that that's BS, that muscle memory is BS or saying that. But here's the thing. It's like exactly what Wade said. You're going in and you're doing the same workout in the same order. By the time you get to the fifth exercise, you've exhausted so much of your energy. And so you don't have as much down here as you had when you walked in and you keep doing the same, same pattern. But when you flip it, then you're starting out with the one area that you've been weak on, that you've worked when you were exhausted and you're opening up with that. And it's a different thing, isn't it? So it, it is like he said, it's not, you know, some people are saying, well, muscle memory, that's a bunch of BS. But what he's talking about is that this is changing the direction, going in and doing a new workout out of the gate. Like I always go in and I would try to do squats first because they were my hardest thing. And I knew if I tried to do them last, I would be like exhausted. So Wade had to start changing my stuff around go, you know, we're going to go in and do leg extensions first. Now we're going to go do squats. I would sit there and go, holy cow, how am I going to do squats after five second hold leg extensions, four sets. <laughs> You're killing me. And so by the time I got to squats, man, I was just, woof. But see, my leg extensions were strong where usually I would go to leg extensions and I'm like, oh my God, I can't do this. You know, so I understand exactly what he's talking about. It is so true. You got to confuse them. You really do. They, you will see a difference. You will see a soreness that you haven't felt in a long time. Mm -hmm. And that means that they're working because if you're working out and you're not getting sore, then you're not breaking those muscle fibers down. So you're going in there and you're just banging your head up against the wall. You want to get sore. And as soon as you're not, then you have to change something because that muscle is not going to keep developing if you don't push it. Okay. You have to tear those fibers down in order for them to get sore. That is the healing process. That is the growing process. That is when your muscles are growing, when they are sore, when they are healing. We don't get as sore as we used to though. Thank God. I'm sore today. <laughs> Good. So, tip. Pam, you got some. Well, um, I just train as hard as my body will let me every single day. Some days it's harder than others. Some days it's a heavy day and I can just 
crank it out. And then other days, if, if I'm not mentally all there, I still force myself to do it, but maybe I'll do more cables or maybe I'll do higher reps or maybe I'll do more what I consider like a shaping kind of workout. So it just kind of depends on, you know, what, um, cause you just, you just can't push yourself every single workout, every single day. Sometimes mentally, you're just not there. So you just do what you mentally can. Um, but I always go for a burn, a pump, a failure, a something. I mean, I never leave anything on the table every single set. So to me that, and then I get that little bit of soreness, that little bit of stiffness, and then I feel like I've done a good workout. So that's pretty much what I try to achieve each and every time. I also change up angles a lot. So like for leg extensions, I'll do um, a few sets with my toes up and then I'll do a few pointed because it hits a different part of the thigh muscle. So, um, you know, just kind of change things up a little bit with angles and things like that, just to kind of make sure I'm hitting every part of that fiber and not just always the same one. So that's a good one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And see, I do the same thing with squats. So I'll do a regular squat mm -hmm. where I stand straight up and then I'll do a more where my feet are back farther squat Yeah. and leaned more forward. Yeah. That's more of a glute focused squat. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and changing the width of our, our legs, like sometimes I'll have my feet straight, mm -hmm. you know, in this angle, and sometimes I'll have them turned out. Yeah. Sometimes I'm also on, um, it's the same squat, but I'm um, up on some uh, plates, some plates, yeah. my heels are on plates, yeah. because I'm focusing on those glutes. So it gives me that forward kind of squat. Yeah. And, and I can't go, I can't go real heavy on squats because I have a bulging lower disc. So I do a lot of belt squats or a lot of leg presses and um, Bulgarian squats. I mean, I'll do all kinds of different movements that just to kind of take the weight off my back. Um, but yeah, you just got to find what that is and go till it hurts. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. Yeah. Game. Belt squats are great. Mm -hmm. They are. They are because you don't have to, you don't have all that stabilizing on your back. It's all on your waist and your hips. And so for me, it's a lot easier to concentrate on my uh, quads doing those. Yeah. I love them because people who couldn't do squats for a long time can yeah. do belt squats. Yeah. You know, like I can't yeah. do them, you can. Chris, yeah. I know you've got to have some tips. Uh, well, for me, basically, it's just a non negotiable and it's, it's, I look at it as a prescription and I'm a physical therapist and I used to work with seniors and, you know, they would be really good and religious about taking their pills. And I'm like, well, you need, you need to think about exercise as a prescription because, you know, exercise can treat high blood pressure, cholesterol, diabetes, depression, and anxiety, all those things that people so readily take a pill for. And, um, what I had them do is take like a little piece of, a neon post-it or something and ball it up and put it in their pill trays so when they would see it they'd be like okay I have to take my exercises too um and so you know it's just to me it's just a non-negotiable and I consider it a prescription and I and I go do it uh, Jeff you have anything um you still thinking well, about that uh, burrito <laughs> <laughs> no that, the first tip would be that wage chest exercise is really good because I'm sore today too so, um, but the second tip would be what I learned a long time ago, because I I feel like I have pretty good arms and shoulders and um, I don't do heavy weights with them. I'm going to start doing them now, but I do really light weights. You don't need a lot of weight for those muscles and the bicep. Um, I do supersets of like 50 different reps and just blow it up with light weight. And I don't know if everyone wants to do that to themselves, but any guy who wants to cut their arms a little bit, I mean, that's something you can try one week and it's, it's a heck of a workout. 50 yeah. to 60 reps. Yeah, Definitely yeah a lot more. easier on your joints and tendons doing the lighter weight too and just up in the reps and up in the intensity that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have any workout stuff? No, you know, I've always, you know, when I do these uh, body weight exercises uh, in the mornings, especially on arm and shoulder day, I, I always make it a point to uh, express that shoulders are, shoulders are, are, they can be touchy. 
because you've got so many muscle fibers um, that that form four different muscles in that shoulder. Okay, it doesn't take much weight. It really doesn't. You go in the gym and you see these guys with the 40s and the 50s and they're trying to do side laterals. All they're doing, man, is number one, it's just for show. Number two, they're going to they're going to blow a shoulder out more than likely. So I don't ever do anything over 20, 25 pound dumbbells when I'm working shoulders uh, and I'll work them excessively uh, and extremely hard. But uh, it doesn't take a lot of weight. It really doesn't. Now, to build, to build muscle, you do have to use weight. You do. You have to use heavier weight than what you use if you're needing, if you're wanting to just tone or, or, or get cut. You definitely do. But on the shoulders, there's really not a big difference between building and cutting as far as weight. You can do both with a 20, 25 pound dumbbell max. It really has to do with your form. If you have really, really good form, you can go in and you can accomplish what somebody with bad form using heavy weight, or you could probably accomplish more. Because me personally, I don't do a lot of real, real heavy weight, but I do a lot of really, really focused form. And that helps me build the muscle, to be perfectly honest, because you can turn just the slightest. You can make adjustments, just like uh, she was saying about the squats. Um, you, can, you can work different muscles, different muscle groups different angles. at different angles, and that will help you build that muscle group up. That's my tip. Yeah, that's good. All right, guys, we got to let you go. We've drug it out way too long. But you know what? We learned a lot. And I hope that everybody learns from this. Let's all try to show up here every Tuesday night. We have some great stuff coming up and we have a lot of new clients. We got to get over here. The, this information, if you're a new client, is so important to you to succeed. So I got to get them in here. Uh, let's all try to be here. We love you guys. Have a great night. I'll put this recording inside the bar garage. Thank you for your tips, guys. Thanks, guys.